I only hit 89% of the notes correct anyway. Okay. Calm down. Okay, so back to the personal question. I can put on some little some vibe. I'm going to take a little short break after I answer this question anyway. Um, is that what I want right now? Uh, what I'm feeling right now in my spirit is this instead. Yeah, great, 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 great. Okay, so Lady Cre Creepington um, is here. Thank you to everybody watching over on Reddit and listening in on Clubhouse and the replays. I know y'all listen on the replays. And um, also to the people over on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, I'm sending you love. Lady Creepington asked me a question. Can I ask a personal question, Andre? Sure. Why not? Uh, I have boundaries, so I will let you know if I don't want to answer the question. And you asked me, what's the hardest thing you did for love? Feel free to skip the question. I won't skip the question. I won't skip the question. Um, I'll just tell you the answer that I can tell you without crying. Like there's, I've done multiple hard things for love and some of the hardest things would actually not even be appropriate to share to strangers. But I can tell you that I uh, left my career on cruise ships. I've been singing on cruise ships for multiple years and made thousands of untaxed money. <laughs> I do pay my taxes, but I made ridiculous amounts of money with free room and board. And there were a couple things that were going on in my life. Some of these things I can share with you. And then sometimes some of these things I cannot share with you because some of the people that are involved in this story are in prison right now. <laughs> oh man. It's not, I, this is not me. This is what I, I'm telling you. Let's see who's on camera too. Do we have anybody on camera too? Yeah, we do. Oh gosh. All right, here we go. This one's for the recording people. I can only tell you parts of the answers to this question, uh, Lady Creepington, because the, one of the people that I'm thinking of in this story right now that, that will answer this question is in prison for doing very, very bad things to people. Um, and so uh, I can't talk about that part, but... What I can talk about is how, Ooh, Jesus Christ, what I can say um, is that um, I was living my dream on cruise ships, singing for many years, and uh, scared every day that they were going to fire me because I didn't believe that I was enough, but that's a different story. I, I was on the cruise ship and I was working through a rehearsal with this guy who's now in prison. <laughs> God, I, I shouldn't say things like that because people can connect dots. Um, but I was working with this guy and he said to me, he, I was working Georgia on my mind. No, that's a different guy. It's a different guy. Anyway, throughout my career, people had told me, I'm glad it's a different guy. It is a different guy. It's a different guy. This guy said to me, you sing like you've never been in love. You know, you're happy, like minding your business and living your life. And then someone like tries to like poke a hole in your happiness. Like, oh, I know you're singing all over the world on cruise ships, but have you ever noticed you've never been in love and that you don't sing like you've been in love? And I know he was trying to help me, but it really like planted a seed of like, oh my God, I, I need to find a partner. I need to find someone to be with. I need to find somebody to love. I'm broken somehow. And I left the hardest thing I did for love was that I left my cruise ship career behind making thousands of dollars um, to fall in love with a very pasty white man named Maitland, <laughs> who I still love. And I gave all of my savings into our shotgun marriage. And I moved to the hills of Tennessee with him for love and did not sing a single note of song for three and a half years. In fact, that's a lie. I did sing one time in the family room of a golden corral. 
And there's nothing wrong with singing in a family room of Golden Corral. There's many people singing in the family room of Golden Corral right now, making people very happy for their birthdays and things like that. Um, but that's not who I really am. But the hardest thing I did for love was marrying him after about a month of knowing him to prove to the world somehow that I was worthy of love and that someone would choose me, pick me. Hey, Vo. The idea that someone would choose me and pick me. I'm answering questions from off of Reddit. Someone asked me, can I ask you a personal question, Andre? And I said, of course, yes, I'm an open book. And they said, what's the hardest thing you did for love? As I'm telling them about my marriage to this pasty white man in Tennessee, um, who, while I was in love, trying to prove to the world that I was choosable, you know, that Meredith Grey, Grey's Anatomy, pick me, choose me, Derek, energy is what I had. And the hardest thing I did for love was to leave my cruise ship career behind many years ago to marry him. I loved him and I still love him because true love never dies. True love doesn't evaporate, doesn't go anywhere. But the hardest thing was marrying him after a month of knowing him, being passionately and madly in love with him. He didn't, he didn't ask me to work. He didn't ask me to do anything but just be his. But then for three and a half years, I didn't sing a single note. I didn't step on stage for three and a half years while I was in love. Like these hard choices of love where you have to choose sometimes, or I felt like I had to choose. I'm not choosing anymore, but I felt like I had to choose between being in love with this man and being on stage. And so the hardest thing I did for love, where we're talking about love of a person, I'm talking, that's Maitland in Tennessee, me in the house. We had a three bedroom house, two baths and two dogs. And sometimes three when we fostered them. I had the quote unquote American dream. Um, and the hardest thing I did to answer, like the hardest thing was falling in love with him. And then the equally hardest thing was leaving him behind to go to New York to try to be on Broadway. So, so yeah. I don't have a hardest thing that I've done for love because I've done plenty. Um, I've done plenty. Hey, Tahira, Vo was just here. I've done plenty. Tear, I just to let you know what's going on. Someone over on the Reddit live stream asked me uh, what's the hardest thing I did for love, and I explained it to them. Sometimes reaching for your dreams causes extreme pain. To people you love. You don't intend it to go that way. You don't even want it to go that way. You work really, really hard to try to not make it go that way, but then your dream becomes bigger than your circumstances. So you painfully leave. Okay. So yeah, you can ask me all the personal questions you want. I'm not hiding behind anything. I'm bare chest. I'm a black man in America. I have nothing to lose anymore. So yeah, ask me whatever questions. I have boundaries, so if you ask me something, some of y'all come into the DM saying very, very weird things about what you want to do to me and pancakes and things, and it's lovely to hear, but I won't be saying those things on an open mic. Um, Confident Study is asking why I'm crying. You gotta watch, You gotta come back for the replay for that. I'm not going through that again. I'm not walking through that. That it's been, I love you when I say that. Um, it's been like, um, it's been 
almost 10 years since the divorce. So, um, but like I said, true love never evaporates. So, um, that's why it always will sting a little. That's why when the exes come and knock in, you feel that, <sighs> it's cause, um, love does not evaporate in the ways that we think it does ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never, ever. <sighs> Never, ever. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lady Creepington. I appreciate you. It was not easy. And I took a detour. It was not easy to leave that man and his love to go and pursue the dreams that were stapled, not stapled, the dreams that were taped to my fridge. I had a vision board back in the day when we didn't have smartphones yet taped to the fridge. And I had to leave him behind to reach my dream. And 10 years later, it still hurts because I had to make a choice. None of my uh, clubhouse bio or none of my pictures on the website and stuff would be there if I didn't make that choice. Practical Donkey, you're back. Good to see you. I love you. Think of happier times. There's a new year coming. You can reach any dream. Oh yeah, I've reached. I've reached my dreams. When I'm in my sassy bag, I often tell people like, I left that man for a reason, and I got the reason I left him for. So this ain't sad tears, y'all. This is just me. You know, I don't think about this every day. I don't go around in life thinking about my ex-husband and how I left him and left the rotisserie and the dogs and everything. The dishwasher. I wash dishes in New York City in my apartment. I left a dishwasher behind with a man who loved me for three and a half years to be on Broadway. And I was on Broadway. And more will come. I, I, I do touch and agree on that to hear it. Uh, I'm sorry to get emotional with you, but yeah, so much respect. Thank you so much. You asked the question, I answer. People think I'm uptight and like pretentious and a bitch. I'm not. I'm just real. And being real sometimes turns me into a, a, like a crying mess of a man with a moose hat on his head. <laughs> Um, but I, I promise you, I'll tell you the truth as much as healthy boundaries will allow. I'm a lesbian, not bare chested, but bare hearted. No, lesbians have bare chest too. Are you a lesbian that's missing a chest? And shout out to all the people out there missing chest. Um, you have a chest. You should be speaking from your chest. I love lesbians. For reasons that I can say and can't say. <laughs> But yeah, shout out to you. I'm going to take a little small break. Shout out to lesbians everywhere all over the world and those who love them. And uh, I'll take a little short break. Um, blow my nose from these tears. I'll come back. I need to make breakfast at some point today. Oh, yeah. We only have like 30 minutes left in this. 32 minutes. We only have 32 minutes left in this stream. And then that's going to be the end of it for me for today. Unless I come back later. <laughs> uh, I love connecting with you. Thank you for making this magic, Lady Creepington, and Practical Donkey, and Tara, and Tahira, and Vo, and everybody else who came through. Thank you for making the magic. It's a, it's a powerful moment. I'll never forget it. It's all live here. Yep. Like life. No do-overs, no take-backs. You just gotta move forward. You can't live life living in, you can't live life looking in the rearview mirror. All right, it's too early for wine. I would usually like grab a glass of wine and just drink right now, but um, in a healthy, you know, non-alcoholic way for sure. Um, and shout out to all the twelve steppers out there in the world. I love you, Lady Creepington. I don't know if you have to go or uh, I'm gonna go catch some air. I got a little smoke break, and then I'll come back on the flip and 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 sing for the next 31 minutes uh, or practice or something, and then I'll move on with my life. I got emails to do and. A whole plan of action that's in play and musicians to reach back to and babies to kiss and asses to kiss on the internet. It's just, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. 
and I love you. <laughs>